<laughs> Clear blue skies, crispy frost every day of the week. I get out with the boys and it looks like this. You may have heard me mention Eric, the best goshawk in the world. This land used to be like water stripped down, small sandy warrens that I could ferret easily on my own. And had to teach him about sheep netting. There's a video, because you can teach birds about sheep netting quite well to avoid it. And we used to get flights around the sheep and everything. And this land really produced that bird's kind of What's the word? It produced his talent because any falconry, if you can find endless game for your young hawk to hone its skills and its confidence, you're going to get a made bird much quicker and much better. VHD cleared land of rabbits here for many years. It's been nine years since I've actually worked here. And these guys now tell me that the rabbit population has bounced back at long last, thank goodness for that. Any hawk that knows about ferreting switches on once it sees the ferret going to ground. <laughs> I've left the boys and our guest Tom has gone back to pick up his hawk. I've just seen him a rabbit run from one warren to another. Oh look. Hey, Heron. You know, I've left the boys. Getting very cold. I've dressed to walk with an eagle. You do get very warm very quickly. So not many layers and blooming cold ferritin. So good luck to those two. Difficult day, and do you know why? because Kyle invited uh, another countryman friend and his son. And you can guarantee it, you invite someone along to send them a good day's full career, and it's tough. Zeus was okay, nobody filmed it again. We had one good flight out over an open field where he put him from above and the hare did a really good one too, that was that. In the last field, walking back to the car, a really good flight. Tommy put a hare right under his feet, that ran and bumped up another hare. As they ran through the hedge, Zeus actually was slipped out the hood and he was unsighted. Flew off at a slight tangent, but as he cleared the hedgerow, he locked on and put in an awesome flight and seemingly kicked the hare along and bowled it across the field, but didn't certainly didn't manage to get hold of it with his feet properly. Um, so, yeah, just not getting these flights on camera. So hopefully when you're watching this video, we'll have sort of stored up some clips ready for this kind of Christmas special Falconry Journal. So it's going to be longer, hopefully, with more action. Wait and see. To everyone that subscribes if you don't subscribe please do i'm out today with tom carnahan now tom carnahan many things to many people he is a really well-known eagle falconer he's traveled europe flying his eagles and seeing other eagle falconers uh, he's got some great footage and photographic 
sequences from a pop a really famous meeting that many of you have heard of. Uh, we're out with his eagle today. We'll see what we see. Let's hope I get some footage, or at least Tom gets some fantastic images, because another thing he's well known for is his still shots, photographs of eagles in action. Enjoy. Well, typically in that case, although we had a really good falconry photographer with us, Tom Carnahan, typically we saw nothing worth him even lifting his lens for. So we did have one slip with Zeus. He flew, he flew it well, the hair turned into the wind <clears throat> and he just pulled off. Uh, and that's nothing to do with weight or anything else or keenness. It is because he's a nine year old golden eagle. As birds of prey go, eagles are pretty clever. And in nine years, he's worked out the sort of slips that offer him a good opportunity and those that offer us a sporting view of a flight, but very little opportunity for him. He's not interested in providing us a sporting flight. He's interested in his tummy, just like a wild bird of prey. They soon learn what's worth wasting calories for. Is there a good chance of catching this, worthwhile a chase, or is it highly unlikely? I've learned that in this situation, the hairs will out drag me into the wind up a hill, or I can see it's gonna get into the hedgerow before I get there, so on and so forth noisy things so i'm out with the boys today it started to snow it started off with freezing fog and now it's about to snow but me and the boys are going to get out we'll see what we see enjoy the rest of this journal and i'll catch you later on Yeah. Hey, I'll stop throwing a minute. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 let it, you've got us go her way so she can see it. Yeah, I can, I've got to scare it to go around that side now. Okay, so this edition's book review has to be Wear Eagle's Hair by Tom Carnahan. A really good book, a word I don't like using a lot, but it is a real journey. You're going along on his journey and his falconry. Uh, some great anecdotes, funny, harrowing, what every good book should be, and educational. Wear Eagle's Hair, I don't know if it's in print and there's any new copies out there. Do some searching, it's well worth looking into. And of course, while we're on Tom's subject, Kaiser Slip-Ons. This is someone who's, it is that old English inventor mentality, reinventing the wheel, which is incredibly hard to do. And he has with the Kaiser slip-ons as well as some of his amazing eagle hoods manufactured in a way that no one else in the world has tried. He puts a lot of time into these. They're not whims. They get field trialed for a very long time before production and then tweaked and adjusted as people give him more and more feedback as time goes on. Kaiser slip-ons completely revolutionised. I'm going to put a link in the description for all of these things. Moving on, who should we review on YouTube? Well, on YouTube, I don't actually watch many Falconry channels. I have a, a, a few channels I watch, and like most of you, other things in between. Um, not many are Falconry related, and there's a simple reason why. If you watch a lot of someone's videos, it's easy to plagiarise without meaning to, to sort of copy some of the stuff they say, and I want you to realize this is all real on this channel so weirdly the topic i watch least of on youtube is actually full creep based topics but my next recommendation there are still to come don't worry is mercer fulkery dan mercer compared to me he's a young up and coming he will admit himself he does very little hunting falconry but the work he does with birds of prey flying in falconry displays education experience days like many of the staff here at icarus falconry gives him a huge and in-depth knowledge of falconry, training and working with these birds of prey. He's got a nice way about him. His videos are interesting and he puts a lot of time and effort into them. So if you're certainly like watching stuff that's interesting and entertaining or you want to learn more and more about falconry, 
Dan Mercer, Mercer Falconry, check out this channel. I think you'll enjoy it. And the reason why an awful lot of folks say to me, I really like watching your channel, Dave. I also like watching Dan's channel. Weirdly, I spoke to Dan. He gets told the same thing. So there's similarities there, maybe for that educational side, that people enjoy. So highly recommend this week's YouTube video, Mercer Falconry. Check it out. I've only watched a few of his channels. We did co collaborate on one of them. I think you'll enjoy them. Enjoy the rest of the video. Already, a clear blue still week has turned into minus six wind chill, cloudy, cold on the hands, but we're ready to go. Well, that's Kyle sorted. So we just got out of the car, first field. I got up really close, and Zara was off. One hair, one slip, one hair in the bag. I think you'd be hard pushed now to find another Harris Hawk in the UK that can take hairs uh, as well as Zara. She literally has taken a hair every single time Kyle's took her hair hook in this season. This girl started her life as a non-hunting experienced day hawk. Home was given to me because she started to show a bit of aggression towards the staff. We started hunting her on rabbit and then Kyle took her on and his all-rounder squirrels feather, rabbit, and then really switched her into flying her out of the hood like an eagle. And it doesn't matter how far the slips are. I'd back this bird against any goshawk and any golden eagle on hairs at any distance. She's probably not that quick, but she is so fit. And above all, the biggest key of all, it's her confidence and her prey drive. This bird here is fed on every hair it catches. Kyle's now going to spend the rest of the day carrying a fat hawk around doing no more falconry at all. But this bird, because of that hot meat, is rewarded for such monumental efforts. She's actually just dynamite. Kyle, what did she weigh today? Uh, two eight and a quarter. Yeah, so good size, but not, not as top end of hers. No, Excellent. Cold last night. And that's how it's done. Because the bird's well fed and well rewarded and helped, not robbed. So we were out literally five minutes and we're walking back to the van. Because Kyle has done enough. Well, he hasn't. Sarah has. Kyle did all the hard work carrying her over there. Uh, then we're going to have a wee and go back out again with the other two birds. There's a hill to sledge down. So when you're on land, where the hares use a primary escape tactic, which isn't to move. Oh, good timing. I was going to say, a tight line of slow walking up and helps. There goes Alan. Oh, look at that. The male Harris up, he's bought by the cover. trying to find that hair uh, that's hiding in there. Bless him, I can't fly Zeus here because I can't get over our fence. Oh, look at this. Well, that's, not, that's not a nice sight, is it? 
a mummified frozen fox. Actually, exactly what a golden eagle will be glad to find in a Scottish winter. Even that manky, if you're starving. So you can see Alan's flying them. He's not making too much effort to bind. Now Alan's flying at nearly one pound 13 ounces, which is huge for Mal Harris up because he's massively in condition, massively muscled, and he's an imprint. But even he's getting to the point, he's realizing binding to hairs is probably stupid. Tommy would like to just catch one with him because he's shown such a zeal for them. But I think he's realizing like most male hawks do, it's kind of a stupid idea. There's smaller things to catch. Business or yeah. wanted that or not, yeah. Completely different than when he's half-hearted it sort of thing. I walked past that. Yeah, I stood back. Because I, I got off because I got off my line of imaginary imaginary line, I lost track of where it could be. Yeah. You wouldn't know it was there, would you? That one hasn't got That's up. Why I that one sat. Thought, we're walk past it. Yeah. There's a hair sat there about sixty yards away. It's still sat tight. Yeah. I think you ran over the top of it. That's him. He was tucked in when he was just pumping. He knew yeah, he that's Shoulder him. Like, him. this is in my favour. There's a slope downhill. It's running the right yeah. way. He puts everything into it where he feels totally confident. Yeah. And puts nothing in when he thinks it's a half a chance. You know, he's nine years old. You know, he knows which is hard work, which is likely to be successful. It looks the sort of size that he'd, he'd want. <laughs> so really good flight. Uh, Zeus made up his mind the minute he left the glove that he was going to catch this one. And to a degree, I think that's a parent reared nine year old eagle that's flown enough game to know when it sees a really good chance, or oh, I've flown this sort of thing before, normally the hair gets to the hedge, or it goes up the steep hill, it's hard work. He's done it all, he knows it all. He's not a first year bird that chases anything. But if we get it right, we get a really good he was going to catch this the minute the hood came off and so that is how it is it's that much difference in attitude which makes up for all the flights where he half asses it <laughs> and he's very disappointed and again just like Zara he's going to get fed up on this and well rewarded nothing like the battle that Zara has to do but still a lot of flights go into Zeus before he actually catches anything. I think the difference is average hairs around here are eight pounds. Hello boy. Zeus is eight and a half pounds today. So it's a fair match when it comes to power and muscle on the ground. Zara's taking that on at two and a half pounds and that's why Kyle always rewards her well on a hair. A monumental effort. Basically sums up what a raptor is, a bird of prey. Very different from all the birds that catch them with their beaks. Happy to let him feed. You can see he's not possessive. With me there, he's not dragging it away. But why be tired of fox that tried to steal it right now?
Sue's so back in the van. A bit lighter. Change of terrain. It's always interesting on any given day in any given weather to see what terrain the hares prefer. Today we've seen quite a few. We've left them but lurking in hedge bottoms because it's the first windy day for over a week. Probably for a couple of weeks. That wind chill. They take, take more shelter sometimes. We shall see. It's called falconry, it's not called killing. It's about so much more, so much more than taking game to feed the birds. What I haven't managed to film is all the little voles we've been seeing. So it's probably quite a good vole, yeah? And that's critically important for our kestrels, foxes and barn owls especially as well as of course the kites and the buzzards. Good fall winter keeps these animals alive. Alan just had a mega slip on a rabbit that just came out of the hedge as we walked along. Yep, the phone was not recording. And now he's got the hump because it got into a hole. And no, no he hasn't, he's got the hump because the cows just came running over. <laughs> and away they go. And away. <laughs> the pack hunting Harris Hawk. <laughs> Look at them. Every time you put in, it stopped and spun around. It was a good team effort between you all, anyway. <laughs> I thought I was, I was like that. <laughs> oh, there you go. A little point. Works with goshawks, works with harrisawks, works with lots of birds that are well known and in tune. So Alan was in that tree. He was hoping to see quarry from there. Was wasn't responding to the glove. So classic manoeuvre. Make him feel insecure. Make him feel we're going to flush game where they're out of position. And very often turn around and put the glove up. And just like then, the bird's catching up. It's realised it's in the back position and you're all doing the right thing. Pretty good trip out with the boys actually, sort of to end this Christmas special, <laughs> I can't speak, this Christmas special Fulkery Journal. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope there's been a little bit more action in there for you guys, seeing the birds flying. Uh, as always when you keep animals and things, I've now had to drive half an hour to look after the birds here and another half an hour, 20 minutes or so back home. So although you know, you're know cold and you want a cup of tea, when you've got animals you've got to take care of those first. And then it's time for you to warm up, really. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, an interesting thing to note. I'll try and put a disclaimer at the front of these Falkery journals because some people on the channel might be here for just snakes, reptiles, nature, that kind of thing. As pure as it is, as pure as it is, Falkery is a, is a type of hunting. Uh, and the end game, if the bird's lucky and effective, is it gets its food, which is something it's killed, isn't it? Of course, it doesn't kill it. The falconer kills it. We're not um, allowing an animal to suffer like it would in nature. We're part of that process. We dispatch that animal as fast as possible. We don't want it to suffer. The birds don't care. Wild animals, of course, they prey on other animals. It's not they don't care. It is just, it doesn't enter their mind. They don't care about the other animals suffering. But when humans are involved, that's very, very different. For those that aren't falconers that are watching these with interest, falconry has been practiced for more than 4,000 years. It is recognized by UNESCO as an intangible part of human heritage. And of course, if you are watching them, pass the disclaimer and you don't like it, first, it kind of what's wrong with you, I guess. But secondly, I hope you're getting to see something of an understanding of it. I don't like horror movies. I don't watch them. Lots of people I know do. 
I don't have an impact or a comment on their watching of their horror movies they like. Uh, there's certain foods I don't like. I don't moan at other people for eating them and so on and so forth. I don't practice it if I don't like it. For those of you that are on the fence, you've got to understand that the natural world, life and death, walk hand in hand. In your garden, there are centipedes less than a millimetre across that are hunting down and murdering to eat baby woodlice. There's sparrowhawks fly past your garden and if they can, they'll take out the robin redbreast that you're feeding on your bird table. Because if the sparrowhawk doesn't eat the robin, it will die of starvation. No more than if the robin doesn't eat a beetle grub that you're digging in your garden could in the spring die of starvation. It's a predator. Really important to understand that because I don't know if you can value the life of a worm more than the life of a snake. Can you value the life of a snake more than a rabbit? Is a rabbit being common? Is its life worth any less than a hare? Is a hare's life worth any less than a fox? And so it goes on because to all those animals, their life is their most important thing. And I hope you cherish your life as well. As a, as a hunter of any kind, but certainly as a falconer, it's a pure form of, of hunting because when the bird leaves the fist, it is just nature. Most of the time, the quarry escapes because a hare, for instance, it doesn't run, waving its arms in the air, screaming in fear. It spends its life running from predators, hiding from predators, using its skills to evade predators, just like a rabbit and just like a vole and so on. It is part of their life. Death and avoiding death is just a daily part of their lives. They're not humans in a rabbit's skin. Very different from us. To be honest, most of us would be useless now if we went back to the time of early man when lots of predators actually hunted us. We'd, nowadays, we'd be useless. We would just, we'd be too worried to go out and we'd die of starvation. That's not how they operate. I hope you've had a good Christmas. I filmed this last bit on the Saturday before Christmas. Uh, if you are a falconer, I hope you are watching this, I'll check out the vlogs. There's birds of prowl there, there's falconer on there, there's all kinds of stuff on there and there's nature on there. Check out the vlogs, no time right now because you're probably right now feeling like doing absolutely nothing but sitting on the set east still. Here's to a happy new year, thanks for watching, do me one big favour before we get into new year, click subscribe, massive boost, massive boost to the channel. For now, we'll start again. In just a few days time I'm sure and we'll see in the new year together. Thanks so much you guys.